Hello ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Ding here bringing you a full length base tour and build guide video. If you're just here to see the pretty end product, keep watching for a sec as I've put that before the build guide. For those wanting the whole shebang, it follows on with a floor plan and in-depth guide to sink your eyes and ears into. Now some of my viewers might have noticed a quick rebrand of my logo, intro and channel art. Thought as I was introducing Valheim as a new arm to the channel it could do with a bit of a spit shine. I think it looks a bit more crisp, a bit more professional. So I really hope you like it. I hope you're all also enjoying what Valheim has to offer like punching graylings to death here. But after that's all done you'll want to sink into the comfort of a nice cushy secure little base. And cushy and secure is exactly what this one is. This base is ideal for one, two, maybe three players just breaking out of the Bronze Age and moving into iron. You've just got your stone cutter and you're eager to start using that. It's also got that waterfront real estate appeal so you can have a nice launching platform for your newly crafted calves. On top of that, it looks pretty and is really functional with every crafting station you could need. It's not a giant super mega castle, but don't you worry, for anyone who knows me from my Conan Exiles videos, you won't have long to wait before I churn a few of those out. I'll shut up for a minute just so you can soak in these nice panning shots done with the amazing free cam mode Valheim has to offer. If you enjoy the showcase clips and or build guide on this video, please, please, please hit those like and subscribe buttons for any future Valheim or Conan Exiles builds. If you're new to the channel, do the same, but also check out some of my other videos so you can see what I have to offer, like my Valheim Water Sawmill build. I'll also post timestamps in the description for useful points in the guide like the floor plan or how I've done the windows and things like that. So, now onto the build guide. First off, for a dock base like this, you will need a nice flat area of shoreline with a fair amount of shallow water rather than a sharp drop off. Once found, clear out any pesky logs and reeds like you see me doing here. Then, flop your hoe out and start flattening that bad boy out. Make use of the fact that Valheim terrain is essentially made of cubes and draw the terrain out to flat square edges like this. It will make building those harbour walls way easier. As there's currently no raise or lower function for placing building pieces, and I hate how blocks look like when they float on top of terrain instead of being built into it, then like I do here, make use of the 100% recycle rate by placing pieces at the height you want, build off that piece, and then destroy it after. Here is the floor plan of the house and smithy foundations. I really like how easy it is to embed the building blocks into each other, which is what any dotted line that's not red is here. It makes getting the size and shape of the build you want much easier. Feel free to pause or screenshot this. Before moving on with the house, I thought I'd finish the harbour wall and garden area by making use of that recycle rate again. Snapping things immediately where you want when blocks are sunk into the floor can be difficult, so you have to sometimes place them above and around the area you want before getting them in place. Once you place these giant stone blocks along the edge of the terrain, line the edge with the stairs like you see in this flyover. This not only looks good, but neatens it all up ready for the next step, which is to use the paved stones pathing via the hoe. I paved up the following areas and cultivated a little square for the garden that I now build. Nothing fancy here, just some wooden planks for the fence rather than the stick fences because I think it looks a bit better.
Next, I line the harbour edge with little wooden blocks for the tying ships to. Not sure what these are called in real life, because it might shock you to learn that I'm not also a sailor in my spare time, but it was a nice touch, I thought. Now back to the house. I could have cut time by using the big stone blocks again, but it looks so much nicer when you mix up the little 1x1 one one and 2x1 blocks. I build these walls four blocks high, as you'll see, leaving a few gaps for windows. To make the house a bit more interesting, I make this overhang area supported by stone columns, which will eventually be the smithy and work table area. I also decided on a smaller overhang for the upper floor that juts out towards the sea, which not only looks cool, but gives you a couple extra blocks worth of space for your upstairs area. I've nearly finished this four block high storage room and entrance to the house now. I just thought I'd point out here though that I actually moved this staircase back one block as it worked out better for space upstairs. Bear that in mind if you're copying this build like for like. I'll now show how I make these windows. I can imagine these are going to be made redundant with the next update being focused on building pieces, but for now these are a bit more interesting than just having a hole in the middle of the walls. I use wooden beams along the edge and middle, along with stick fences embedded in the walls either side. The upstairs floor area now needed filling in, so I line the outer edge with the 2x1 and 1x1s and fill in any gaps inside with the big 2x2 stone floor tiles. Make sure you use the arch pieces for where this window sits though, else you may as well have made a square window in the first place. Place some wooden flooring on top for a more cosy feel, but make sure you leave one corner of the room still stone as this is where the half will be placed.
carry on with the walls as you have been with the 1x1 and 2x1s, but for reference, use the side window and that first archway as a guide for the upstairs windows placement. This window on the front of the house is the guide for the front and back windows. Once those windows are finished, line the inner edge of the stone with wooden blocks like this. Then, once that's done, line it again with wooden half walls. Place the small vertical wooden beams to act as roof supports, which makes for a bit more of a detailed roof design than just plonking the thatch onto the half walls. For the roof, start the lower section with the 26 degree pieces, then use the 45 degree ones for the upper sections. Don't forget to add the chimney in the corner like I do, else you'll be whiteboxing your bedroom like some sort of rebellious teenager. This annoying gap couldn't be closed off with one of the smaller roof topper pieces so I close it off with 1x1 one one wooden tiles and then add half walls to act like a bit of a roof trim. I also place full wooden walls to close the gaps on the sides by shift clicking them in place. The main body of the house now finished, I start placing awnings to complement the smithy area, then I add all the necessary smelter, stone cutter and work tables to get you on your way to crafting prowess. I've tested all the pieces in a raging thunderstorm as well and all are completely covered and not exposed.
As mentioned before, the downstairs entrance I wanted to serve as the main storage area close to the smithy, as well as having a couple of fermenters for anything you cook upstairs. There's still easily enough room to stack more crates on top of the ones I place, but you get the idea. I then decorate upstairs, placing a couple of beds, cooking equipment and furniture for that sweet, sweet rested bonus. That's one feature I really like about Valheim is that it gives a tangible benefit to gameplay just by decorating and making stuff look cool. With that done, I go back outside and build a simple wooden dock for your boats and a nice little fishing platform to boot. With those done, I create a little area for the portals as these are just as important as the cars for getting about the map. Last but not least, I now put a defensive wall consisting of stone bases and wooden stake walls around the land facing side as no mobs can get in via the harbour side. If you're on a PvP server or just don't trust your neighbours, you could fully enclose this and put some wards down too if you like. With the final pathing of this pathway out the rear entrance, the build was complete. I really hope this guide was helpful and if you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe. I now leave the flyover once again so you can see the finished product. This has been Jimmy Ding. Have yourself a good one guys.